Start of the race. Uh, getting back to Morbidelli, uh, I was really happy to see uh, the old Franco uh, flashes of him come back. Um, from inside the box, do you feel he's on his on well back on track? Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's uh, very happy now. Every time he wants to push, he's fast. He is. He got back uh, the confidence, the speed. In, uh, even in Qatar, for me, he looked uh, much better compared to the winter test and uh, here uh, even more. It's uh, for sure a good uh, and important point for us because now we can really compare the two data, the two rider data during the, the race weekend. And as you know, one can push the other one. And that's uh, uh, our, our aim. Mayo, thank you for your time and I hope you get to go racing. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Yeah, thanks to Simon, thanks to Monster and his Yamaha team manager, Maya Merigal. It was a real tough start, wasn't it, for the factory Yamaha team, Yamaha in general, a couple of weeks ago over in, in Qatar. Fabio Quattro, what a difference a couple of weeks can make. It kind of just shows the unpredictable nature of this year's World Championship. The, the world champion struggling ninth place and over ten and a half seconds back of this man in Qatar yet he comes to a brand new circuit here in Mandalika and has kind of the least of all problems uh, with this new harder case in Michelin rear tyre he, he was looking forward to making the soft rear work in dry conditions which unfortunately we are not going to get of course because even if the rain stops it's not going to dry up sufficiently quickly enough uh, for a dry Indonesian Grand Prix that's sort of expression there the raised eyebrows from Alessio Spigaro's crew chief Antonio Jimenez there the body language as well hand on hips kind of sums up where we're at really unfortunately here in Indonesia everybody just playing the waiting game and looking skywards and keeping close eyes on the the weather radars, the weather technology. Can we glean anything from that little map there as we again look at all the local dignitaries? I really do hope uh, that we can get some MotoGP race action in here because it would be the, the perfect way to end what's been such a brilliant weekend all round. As Lewis touched upon, we had a fantastic welcome when we first arrived here in Jakarta, the parade of 20 riders with President Mr. Widodo. It was like rock stars, wasn't it? And this was all part of what we hoped was going to be a, a really special uh, grid ceremony to kick off the Indonesian Grand Prix. We saw the special grid ceremony for the first time precede the Qatar Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago. It was a, a real nice new feature. Even though they can't go on the grid and they can't perform out on the circuit, well, the band are still going to play the Indonesian National Anthem. So myself and Liz will we'll just pause for a couple of moments.
Well, you've got to give credit to the Indonesian authorities here. They're doing everything they possibly can to keep the, the patient fans, the expectant fans, entertained and occupied as we continue to have this unfortunate rain delay here. The race, of course, should have been over by now. Unfortunately, we're still waiting. We'll, uh, we'll take another quick breather as well and, and soak up what hopefully is the pre-race atmosphere of this uh, marching band. rousing and fantastic rendition of the Indonesian national anthem. Some positive news to bring you as well. It looks like the rain just has started to ease off. Oh, that made the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, didn't it? The band there playing in front of the president, Mr Joko Widodo. The fans putting their heart and soul into that national anthem as well. What a picture that is. Great scenes here, that's why we are so desperate to give these fans the show that they came for, the show that they have been waiting for for 25 years. We're 10 minutes away from what we hope will be the pit lane opening. And this is the reason why we have the new 15-minute start procedure in place, the shorter start procedure, is if there is a window in the weather where it does ease off, they want to make the most of it, because, of course, there's every chance, if it does ease off, that the rain could intensify once again later on. So a sensible application of the rules, where if we do get a little bit of a gap in the weather where we can get a race, and it's important to capitalise on it as soon as we can. The fans there getting the pictures that they'll cherish for many a year to come. Hopefully, they'll get some pictures of MotoGP bikes being ridden in anger around this Mandalika circuit. There has been a little bit of a break in the torrential rain. Let's hope those clouds can clear off and we can get some race action coming up. We can hear the MotoGP bikes just being warmed up in the uh, pit lane. That's got the fans cheering, and this will hopefully get us all cheering because the new schedule has just been released. There you can see on your screens, pit lane will open as we'd anticipated and as we'd hoped at 4 p.m. local time for a race start at 4.15 local time. So about 75 minutes after we'd hoped to have the Grand Prix of Indonesia underway here in Mandalika. But let's hope that finally this easing of the rain means that we will get this much anticipated, this much expected and much hyped Grand Prix of Indonesia here in Lombok. Fabio Quattararo will be rushing off to change back into his leathers, of course, having enjoyed the uh, the uh, dance-off that was taking place in the grandstands. Of course, much like uh, much like you guys back at home, I'm sure you all much rather watch motorcycles go on the racetrack and hear us talk over them. But yeah, we hopefully will be only just under 25 minutes away from the race getting underway. Pit lane then due to open in just over eight minutes' time, and that has got the crowd up on their feet. Yeah, the local circuit announcer just uh, confirming the news that we have just brought you uh, sitting at home. We thank you for your patience wherever you are in the world. We know some of you, particularly in Europe, have had a pretty early start uh, to watch the, uh, the race action. Hope you've got some strong coffee on board and you can now enjoy what will be, of course, a shortened 20-lap Indonesian Grand Prix. You can just still see there 
on that camera shot, looking at that spectacular Lombok coastline. A bit of rain still falling, but nothing like what we had about a couple of hours ago almost now. Yeah, the rain started to really get heavy around 20 minutes or so, maybe, following the end of the Moto2 race, which in itself had been shortened. So the riders in that race will say, even pleased that that race got shortened, which was due to the track conditions, not due to the rain. It was more due to the very hot temperatures that we've got here where they decided to shorten the race. That rain could have come just around the end of the Moto2 race, had that run to its full distance. So uh, they will have certainly been relieved on that score. Well, we have waited 25 years for both the GP action in Indonesia. And we're about 25 minutes away now, hopefully, from the start of the Grand Prix of Indonesia at the Pertamina Mandalika circuit. You can see there, Loris Caparossi and Franco and Cini, they've had a very, very busy afternoon. They're doing everything they possibly can to try and clear off any standing wards that might still cause a problem. You can see in those puddles there, the rain is still falling, but it has eased off. Trust us, ladies and gentlemen. The organisation, both in MotoGP and here in Mandalika, they're doing everything they possibly can to make sure that this race does get underway at our new scheduled time. 4.15 local time. So perhaps we can call that part of the race at the shallow end, can we, of this uh, Pertamina Mandalika circuit. It, yeah, they've been working right throughout this delay, as I mentioned. But it was important to them that when the weather did break and an opportunity to get a racing did take place, that the track was immediately in a condition that they could get racing as soon as possible. We have seen, and you can see a little bit there as well, back on uh, Saturday morning when we went out for free practice three in Moto3, we saw Alia Bartolini have a really big high side out into the gravel traps and the gravels, gravel traps were absolutely flooded here. So hopefully they've been keeping an eye on that as well to make sure that there aren't too many puddles that the riders could fall into. If in doubt, get the brushes out. Yes. We've just had the Winter Olympics. We might have some candidates for the Great Britain curling team here or an Indonesian curling team indeed in the future. We've got the brooms, we've got the brushes. We've got the road sweepers doing everything we can then to get the race underway in, what is it now, 15.54 local time. So in just over 20 minutes' time, we should be good to go, all being well here at the Pertamina Mandalika circuit. There's Loris Caparossi and Franco Mancini and, and other Dorna representatives make sure that every aspect, every potential problem corner with standing water is cleared before the riders do head out on the circuit. So who will see this as a big opportunity then, a wet race in MotoGP? The likes of Paul Espargaro perhaps starting down in 15th on the grid for Repsol Honda. Of course, he took his first MotoGP podium in very torrential wet conditions in Valencia. He will certainly see this as a big opportunity. Brad Binder, we've mentioned, of course, he's very, very good in his, his conditions as well. John Zarco, Jack Miller on the Ducatis will see as an opportunity. The big question, I suppose, will be Fabio Quattararo from pole position, just how much has his wet weather riding come on since we last saw him at the end of last season. So finally, we are getting the MotoGP riders and teams prepped and ready to go. They're bringing all the equipment onto the track now. We are going to start the quick start procedure. The pit lane will open very, very shortly. Thankfully, the teams are getting braced for this Grand Prix of Indonesia. Suzuki readying Alex Rins. Let's quickly pop down for an update on the current conditions uh, from Simon down in pit lane. I'm, I'm only interrupting because, guys, it really has stopped. Like, I'm standing out here with uh, no jacket, no umbrella, and it's almost nothing coming down now, so I think we're, we're in luck. Great news, Simon. Thank you very much indeed for that. Pit lane opens then in just over four minutes' time. And you can also see, just to uh, underline Simon's point, a number of the spectators in the exposed seats at the front of the grandstands have removed their rain jackets and their mats that were uh, keeping them dry in the torrential conditions that we had for the last couple of hours. So all being well, we'll be off and underway with the first Indonesian Grand Prix in the Premier Class for 25 years the race due to get underway in just under 20 minutes time Fabio Quattararo will line up from pole position then let's just run you quickly through the grid that will be lining up shortly Martin and Zarco for Pramac there is Jorge Martin second on the grid 
Starts from the middle of the front row. Brad Binder heads row two ahead of Bastianini, the world championship leader, and Pecco Bagnaia. Oliveira, Rins, and Miller. They're on row three ahead of Alessia Spargaro, Fabio Di Gian Antonio, the top rookie, and Luca Marini. Marco Bezzecchi starts 13th ahead of Franco Morbidelli, who did receive a three place grip penalty for an infraction during the practice start session at the end of FP3 yesterday. That dropped into 15th. He's now been promoted back up to 14th because Mark Marquez, unfortunately, who a number of those fans came to see, will not be starting this Indonesian Grand Prix due to a concussion sustained in a violent high side during the warm-up session this morning. That promotes his teammate, Paulus Vargo, up onto the fifth row in 15th with Andre De Vizioso, who certainly got some uh, previous in wet conditions, hasn't he? He lines up 16th ahead of Juan Mir and Alex Marquez. Maverick Vinales would be 19th on the grid ahead of the two Tech 3 rookies of Raul Fernandez and Remy Gardner. Darren Binder is set to start 22nd with Takaki Nakagami in 23rd. They're all, of course, chasing Fabio Quartararo, who starts from pole position. Yeah, just actually quickly popped out of our country box and saw on the back of a scooter going to the Repsol Honda office was Mark Marquez. Quite a, a big plaster, looks like he got on the, the right elbow. If that's all he got away with after that monster high side at turn seven in this morning's warm up, he's a very, very lucky boy. Of course, the eight times world champion. Sadly, not a participant in this shortened 20 lap Indonesian Grand Prix after that big spill this morning. In the warm session, we wish Mark well and hope he's back in action, fighting fit and ready to go. When we make our first trip to South America since 2019, the Termas de Rio Hondo circuit primed and ready for action there in two weeks' time. So 90 seconds then until the bikes will head out onto the racetrack. And of course, the riders wouldn't ordinarily push too hard on a sighting lap, but you can imagine the riders will be very, very keen when they head out there to get a real idea of what the grip levels are like, of course. They'll do one lap to the grid, and then within 15 minutes of the pit lane opening, we will be off and running with the warm-up lap and this 20-lap Indonesian Grand Prix. Juan Mir, boy, has he got some work to do, starting 17th on the grid, although he hasn't felt happy or comfortable at any stage, really, in the dry conditions this weekend. So perhaps a wet Grand Prix might present him with an opportunity to paper over some of the cracks of what has been a really desperate weekend for the 2020 world champion. You know, although he's been in MotoGP a couple of years, hasn't he, Juan? I mean, likewise, Fabio Quattro, they don't have an awful lot of wet weather experience. This is a journey into the unknown as well for the, the rookies, the likes of Marco Bersecchi, Fabio Di Gian Antonio, Remy Gardner, Darren Binder as well. They'd have never raced a MotoGP bike in rain conditions. So Fabio Quattro, for the first time in nine long months. Can't believe we're saying that. He was always the qualifying king of both the GP, wasn't he, the Frenchman? But he is going to start from pole position in this 20-lap uh, Grand Prix. The tw number 20 flags waving proud in the Mandalika grandstands. Just listen to the roar. This is what the crowd have been waiting for for a good couple of hours now since the Moto2 race came to a conclusion with spots of rain in the air. They've seen plenty of rainfall since then. The green flag waves and Joan Zarco leads the field out for this sighting lap. They'll do one lap to the grid. And then at 15 minutes past the hour, the Indonesian Grand Prix will be underway. World champion Fabio Quattararo starts from pole position. Just how much has his wet weather riding come on since last season, of course, it was his difficulties in the wet conditions and mixed conditions that saw him start the Grand Prix that eventually concluded with him as world champion back at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix last year from 15th on the grid. Can he put those problems behind him and give his world championship defence the kickstart that it needs? This is a massive step into the unknown for these MotoGP riders. They've done barely a handful of wet weather laps. Certainly, the track wasn't as wet as this on Saturday morning. So this really is stepping into the uh, unknown territory. Who's going to quickly master the conditions? Who's going to take the big risks? Jack Miller, well, you know that he's so, so good in the wet conditions. He's proven to be strong on the Ducati and the Honda in the past. Of course, it was mixed condition. He took that famous win at the Dutch TT in Assen back in 2016. Who else has got really strong wet weather prowess in this field? Frankie Morbidelli is actually not a bad wet weather rider. Other guys with nothing to lose, really. Andrea Di Vizioso, in particular on a factory Ducati, where you could always put your money on him to be a big threat. 
in these rain conditions. You've got to say, the way that Fabio Quattararo has thrown that Yamaha around that second sector, there's been a lot of feedback from the World Superbike riders here and the Moto3 riders who had a couple of wet sessions that the grit levels here in the rain at this Mandalika circuit are very, very good. Very, very good indeed. So you can see the guys are just out there now trying to understand where the patches of water are, where the water's patched at its worst, and then also just work out the grip levels. Pekka Bagnaia also relatively inexperienced in terms of wet weather riding in both the GP as well. Alex Rins is a rider I'd perhaps point to as well who might have half a chance in these conditions. He starts in the middle of the third row in eighth place. Pit lane closes in four minutes time which is why you're seeing riders come back down pit lane. They do have time to do this. This isn't like the quick restart procedure where you have 60 seconds to get out there before the pit lane closes again. So understandably some of the smart cookies on this grid, the two Pramac riders, the two Suzuki riders taking the opportunity to do an extra lap of the track before they pull up on the grid just to get a little bit more information just to see where some of the damper patches are, where some of the grip levels are. KTM, of course, they'll fancy their chances this afternoon. Brad Binder, last time we saw conditions like this, was winning a race on...